Another week, another set of injuries, upsets, disappointments, and above all, chaos. The NFL Week 11 was crazy as we get ready for the 2023 NFL playoffs. So let's go ahead and dive right into our Week 11 breakdown. Alright, so starting things off with the dreaded Injury Bowl on Thursday night. This was an absolute disaster for the NFL. A PR nightmare. The Cincinnati Bengals losing to the Baltimore Ravens 34-20. to This game was a PR nightmare for the, bang uh, for the Bengals and the NFL with the whole Joe Burrow incident. I'm not going to dive too deep into that. It's been covered to death all across YouTube if you haven't found a video already. There's many of them out there. But either way, let's just talk football here. Cincinnati, you're dead in the water. As much as I hate to say a team is dead in the water before they're even close to mathematically eliminated, the Bengals are. The way I see it, they're going to need to get four wins over the rest of the season, right? And their game's coming up. I have them right here. They have two games against Pittsburgh, a game against Jacksonville, Minnesota, Indianapolis, and Kansas City. That's going to be very tough without Joe Burrow. Especially, I mean, you might say, oh, well, they could win the two Steeler games. They could win the Colts game. The Vikings and Jags could be a toss-up. But the thing is, Steeler football is going to carry the Steelers. The Bengals have serious problems. And without a quarterback, they had no offense, really. Meanwhile, the Ravens, though, getting a W, but they do lose Mark Andrews. A huge loss for them going forward and setting up for the playoff push. Really, really tough loss for them in this game, especially since he is going to be done for the year. But Baltimore's got to have that next man up mentality, and they are still a lethal team. Up next, we have an absolute demolition of a team who is very close to being eliminated mathematically. The Dallas Cowboys just absolutely destroying the Carolina Panthers' hopes and dreams by a final score of 33-10. to Dallas kind of walked into Carolina and said, Hey, buddy, you gonna have a good day? All right, have a good one. Slapped him in the face and turned around and left. I mean, they, they really were tight for in the first quarter. A lot tighter than I would have expected or wanted to see. But Dallas separated in, second, in the second quarter and beyond, really just putting Carolina in their place and just jumping ahead big time. And Carolina, I mean, you did a great job hanging around as long as you did. I give you credit. I thought you guys would have been, you know, dead in the water by the end of the first. And to some, in some regards, you kind of were. But you were still hanging around a little bit, keeping it one score, two score game, you know, not totally out of hand. Up next, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers. Fall into the Cleveland Browns? Pittsburgh not going to the Super Bowl? What? How we lose? The Super Bowl. But, but Super Bowl Pittsburgh. We lost 13-10. I mean, that, we had nothing half one. We completely sucked. We blew the game in every time kind of fashion. Pittsburgh no deserve Super Bowl. Fire Canada. Fire Tamlin. Get that house out of here. Get out of picket hell. Get everyone out of there. Cleveland, good job. You won a game. Now leave Pittsburgh alone. Whoa, who let that Yinzer in here? I don't know. Either way, let's just go on. Chicago Bears falling to the Detroit Lions, 31-26. And Detroit, 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 Detroit. Never, ever scare us like that again. You got bailed out. That was ugly in any every facet of the word. You look up ugly on the dictionary and you'll see a picture of this game for the Lions because it was downright ugly and disastrous and embarrassing for Detroit. You did not deserve to win that game. Yeah, you improved to 8-2, and two, but you got to get your act together. You beat the, the Chargers last week by one score, and then you come here and almost lose to the Chicago Bears. Get your act together. You are almost losing to bad teams. I mean, I know that good teams are going to fall, but you got to put away the bad teams when you have the chance to put them away. You didn't do that, and you almost scared us. Chicago, on the other hand, great job. You saw, you saw an opponent that, hey, everyone countered you out, and you said, no, we're going to keep this game. We're going to keep pedal to the metal, and we are going to win. And you, you had that mentality all the way through the fourth quarter. The only thing that really screwed you was that ball going out the back of the end zone for a safety. Other than that, you were in it every step of the way. Then it was a great return there for Justin Fields. Everything looked good for Chicago, and that is rare to see anymore. Chicago looking good. Speaking of the Chargers, we have the Los Angeles Chargers losing to the Green Bay Packers 23-20. to Now, this is very concerning for, uh, for the Chargers. The Chargers all season have been falling into this pattern of losing one-score games in embarrassing fashion. They've done it, this is what, the fifth time this year they've done it in their losses? It is downright ugly. Brandon Staley needs to get out. He needs to hand over defensive play-calling duties. Everything, they got to get ready to clean house. 
and just get rid of everything in the coaching side because that is what's costing them big time. This roster has the talent to win Super Bowls, but yet the coaching is screwing them over. Meanwhile, Green Bay, you won, but does it really tell us anything about you? I'm not sure because Los Angeles is a star-studded team that should be winning Super Bowls or competing for Super Bowls, but the coaching has been really holding them back, so it's hard to really judge you on this one. Up next, we have a heart attack down in the south. The Houston Texans, oh my gosh, somehow pulling out a win against the Arizona Cardinals, despite C.J. Stroud having his rookie horrible game. He looked absolutely disgusting in this, and I'm, I'm, one that, I'm high on C.J. Stroud, but two touchdowns to three interceptions. Granted, your touchdown-interception ratio on the year is still looking great, but this was a very ugly game for CJ. But, you know, he was bound to have a bad game. He's carried the team the last few weeks. So he's due to have a bad game, and he's he's all right for it. I don't find that a big problem. But the problem for me comes whenever you were had all the momentum. You were just steamrolling the first half. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. Pretty much to end the half with maybe one drive in there that wasn't a touchdown. And yet you still did absolutely nothing offensively in the second half. That is my area of concern. You did no production offensively in the second half. And if it wasn't for your, you know, your defense being able to bail you out, you would have lost that game in embarrassing fashion to Arizona. Meanwhile, Arizona, great job hanging around. You looked solid and you did you did a great job. Kyler Murray's return is living up to the hype and Kyler very well could be the quarterback of this team's future. We've had speculations on that over the last year. Does Jonathan Gannon go with a new head coach or a new quarterback? Does he draft a new quarterback? Does he bring a veteran in? Or does he stick with Kyler Murray? And it looks like Kyler Murray might not be a bad option to stick with, which is good because now the Rams might have a better draft, a uh, better quarterback to draft. All right, good riddance, Tennessee. You lost in embarrassing fashion, 34 to 10 to the Jaguars. Yeah, uh, yeah. Is Will Levis really your guy? You got to have a long, hard thought about that. We know the Jaguars are like really solid this year. I mean, yeah, they just got blown out, so they were going to pummel the next team they met. But you got to look in the mirror and say, okay, where is the problem lying? There is a lot of problems in this team, and I think a lot of it, some of it's growing pains of the rookie. Some of it might fall back on the coaching, and a lot of it, in my mind, falls on the aging core. That core is getting old. They are getting up there in age. You have an aging D-Hop entering his 30s. Derrick Henry starting to fall off the wheels a little bit. And you don't really got anyone else. You got Ty J. Spears, who's looking really solid. Don't get me wrong. He's looking solid. But who, besides DeAndre Hopkins, is your next big wide receiver? That is the question you need to answer. And that's why next year I would be going all out offensive line in the free agency and draft a good wide receiver and running back early. But wide receiver over running back because you're running back. You do have Ty J. Spears, who's looking solid this year whenever Henry's not on the field. Jacksonville, on the other hand, you dominated. We don't need to talk much more about you. You just pummeled. You did what you had to do. Up next, we have the Las Vegas Raiders falling in a very close one to the Miami Dolphins. Final score, 20-13. to Miami, yeah, yeah, you are the most fraudulent team in the league. Yeah, here, uh, let's see here. Uh, here's your reward, buddy. Here's your trophy. You are the most fraudulent team in the league. Now go ahead and kindly leave the playoff picture before you ruin the playoffs. Thank you very much. You struggle against teams that are at or above 500. You manage to beat a team at 500, but against teams above 500, you have lost. You have not played well against good teams. You only beat up on the bad teams. And that is concerning because the playoffs, there's not going to be a New England Patriots in the playoffs. There's not going to be a Carolina Panthers in the playoffs for you to beat down on week in and week out. you got to find a way to beat the good teams if you want to contend in the playoffs. Meanwhile, Vegas, solid effort, overall solid game. I mean, you guys were due for a rough patch here under the new under the new coach, but you know, the new head coach here, Pierce, he is earning that coaching job. If you ask me, he's relating to the players, he's hyping them up, he's getting them ready and wanting to play. He's doing a real good job with this team and with this unit that has underperformed all year, and Aiden O'Connell is looking very solid. I mean, he had a rougher second half. But overall, he has been looking solid these last few weeks, considering the situation. Last week, you know, against the Jets defense, that's going to make you look bad week in and week out, especially with a weaker offensive line. But putting up the numbers he did today in the first half, he looked solid. Up next, we got the New York Giants somehow pulling off a victory over the Washington Commanders. Washington, what is going on with you? Final score, 31-19. 
But what is going on in Washington? You play up to the Eagles and you play up to these good teams. And then the time comes for you to have a very easily winnable game. And you blow it in hilarious fashion too. This one wasn't even close. I mean, it was back and forth throughout, but you found yourself down multiple scores multiple times in the game, and it was not a good look for Washington. You really need to reconsider your team. I mean, you have the ability, but you got to get some more stars in there. Sam Howell's been looking pretty damn good for you, but you got to get talent around him, especially, you know, when his best receiver is Terry McLaurin and he doesn't have a solid number two. I mean, Denami brought... Denami or whatever his name is, Brown, uh, that guy, he's been really solid, you know, at times, but he's been more of a situational player. You've had Brian Robinson pounding the rock big time, looking really good for you guys, but overall there are some concerns about star talent in key positions, especially in my mind, that offensive line is not looking the greatest. And the wide receiver course could use a little bit of help as well. Meanwhile, the Giants, oh my gosh, Tommy DeVito, well, that was a great game. They actually put together a good, marvelous masterpiece. And Brian Dable, is, he, had a, he had a quote of the year moment. When asked in his press conference how much Tommy DeVito grew in this game, Brian Dable turns around and says, I think he's about the same height. Quote of the year right there for a head coach. But anyway, the Giants playing well, playing through Saquon whenever you don't have Darren Waller. Your two, the biggest concern I see for the Giants is a weak offensive line and lack of receiving talent. Other than that, you have a very, very solid look on your team. Especially, you know, you have Darren Waller. But when Darren Waller's on IR, you got to play through Saquon. And they are doing just that. And they did it today against an average team in the league. And you looked really good doing it. Really good. Up next, we have the San Francisco 49ers beating down on the Buccaneers 27-14. This game was a lot closer, though, than I would have expected, especially down the stretch. The Buccaneers were threatening down the stretch, and they looked pretty solid in doing so, of threatening the Niners. Now, the Niners, you know, looked great in the first half, slowed down towards the end of the game. Um, and the thing is, my big concern, though, with San Fran is that they really didn't put Tampa Bay away until the fourth quarter with, like, 333 left. That was when the game was really put away. Up until that point, Tampa Bay was still in the game. And that is my concern. If San Fran is going to keep teams lingering in these games, let's say this was, I don't know, maybe a Baltimore Ravens, a Houston Texans, some a team like that, a Pittsburgh Steelers even. The Steelers are really good in the fourth quarter. Don't let today fool you. They really have been good in the fourth quarter in, in general. But you, you keep your opponents in the game like that, and you are going to get taken advantage of big time in that situation, San Fran. So you got to get that together. You got away with it this week, but you aren't going to get away with it week in and week out. Meanwhile, you know, nice effort, Tampa Bay. You played well. You're, you're considering what you had to go into. You're looking solid. I mean, there's definitely holes in that roster. That roster is really lacking talent, and quarterback play can be an issue at times with Baker Mayfield. But overall, Baker's been really making a comeback in Tampa Bay for you guys. Up next, we have a game. Let's just go ahead and quickly talk about this one. It was a blowout. The Jets falling to the Bills 32-6. to And finally, the Jets making the quarterback change we've been clamoring for since about week three. Making the change, benching Zach Wilson. Now, did it look pretty? Absolutely not. But we are glad to see that Saleh is willing to make the change. And when asked after, in his presser after the game who's starting on Black Friday, he is uncommitted. He is non-committal on a quarterback right now. That's what we need to see. Because Zach Wilson, yeah, there's question marks on the offensive line. And yeah, I mean, you have the talent to stay in it. Your defense is bailing you out. And yes, Zach Wilson's been looking better this year than he has last year, if you ask me, based off of his... You know, his demeanor and all that stuff. He's been doing a lot of growth. But if you're not showing results on the field, you're not going to stay on the field for very long. And that's what happened to Zach Wilson today. Meanwhile, Buffalo, you had a couple key losses on defense. A very scary situation unfolding in the, uh, I think it was, a third, it was the first half, second quarter, uh, with Taylor Rapp and Teron Johnson. Really having a scary incident there for Taylor Rapp. Thankfully, though, he was in the locker room. He didn't get taken to the hospital. He just got brought back to the locker room, motion in his hands. Really good. Very scary situation seeing the ambulance on the field with the Bills again. But overall, thankful that it seems like these two players are going to make a full recovery and relatively soon. So it's not a huge loss for a long time. But, you know, 
it's a tough loss in the moment, and you guys managed to persevere through that and get a big win. Up next, we have the comeback of the century, the Los Angeles Rams beating the Seattle Seahawks 17-16. Oh man, Seattle, that was a choke job. Yeah, you didn't have Geno Smith at 100% because of injury, but man, that, you guys struggled. You did absolutely nothing in the second half except for a field goal on the first drive. Other than that, you went dormant the rest of the game offensively. Defensively, you were falling as well because you let the Rams, who literally only got a touchdown, is the last score in the first half, score 10 unanswered points on you in the second half and win the game. And, you know, it doesn't help whenever your kicker misses a field goal. Thank you for that one, Seattle. Nice nice job for the Rams there. Very tough loss with Cooper Cup. Not sure if he's going to be out long-term or not, but it is very, very concerning to see for the Rams that they finally get healthy, and now they're having more of these injuries to key players once again. But overall, this team, if they do start losing out games, I mean, they do have a tough schedule. I'm looking at it right over here. They have Arizona, who's been looking pretty damn good since the return of Kyler Murray. The Cleveland Browns, whose defense is absolutely suffocating. Uh, the Ravens, who are always in games. Then you have Washington, who has been playing up to bad teams and poor teams. And then you got the Saints, who are going to be trying to fight for the division. So you have a really tough schedule coming up. I personally would not mind as a fan seeing you guys drop these. Because then that gets you into a top five pick or close to it to draft your quarterback of the future. Because Stetson Bennett, we don't know what's going on with him. Stafford's not going to be around for very long. And Wentz is not going to be the guy. He's getting old. He's a veteran. He's a backup. He's a perennial backup. He's not going to be the answer long term. So overall, nice win. Nice taste of victory. But I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want to keep it going. Up next, we have Sunday Night Football, the incredible matchup between the Minnesota Vikings and the Denver Broncos. This game was all it lived up to be. It lived up to the hype. Minnesota jumping out, dominating the first half, jumping out to a relatively big lead. Um, you know, then Denver clawing their way back through field goals and then getting a key touchdown at the end of the game when it really mattered as Minnesota fell off in the second half. Denver just got going in the second half. And it just looked like it was just all Denver all the way. Minnesota had to re resort to a fake punt to get momentum going. And even then, it only got it going for a little bit of time. And then ultimately, it just only resulted in a field goal that drive to go up 20-15. to 15, Which then Denver responds in turn and looks really good doing so. Sean Payton's really turned this team around since week three. And man, these Broncos might be a fringe playoff team. Especially considering... The way that the seventh wild card or the last wild card spot in the AFC is going to be shaking out. I see that the Steelers have a relatively easy schedule. I see the Bank or the uh, Texans should go ahead and make a push. The Browns, I'm a little iffy on. The win today helps them big time, but I am a little iffy without a quarterback. So that might open up that seventh spot there to someone to make a little push into the playoffs. And the Denver Broncos might be on the top of that list because of how well they are playing recently. All right, and last but not least for today's video, we have the Philadelphia Eagles beating the Kansas City Chiefs 21-17 in Arrowhead. This game was a tale of two halves. We went into halftime 17-7 Kansas City. And Kansas City had all the momentum going in the first half. They looked fairly solid. But then Philadelphia came in the second half and said, we're going to put up 14 unanswered points of our own, and they ended up pulling out a big one here. The Eagles defense coming up big. The offense was a bit lethargic, but they came up. They were, they were basically selectively productive. They were productive on the drives that mattered. They were productive on the drives that they scored. The drives they didn't score, they weren't productive at all. So they were either a, they were boom or bust, three and out or touchdown. It was like almost no in-between for this Eagles offense. Once again, I am a little concerned about this team as they are they are pulling themselves behind. They are struggling. They are falling back in games. They're not outright dominating like we would expect out of this Eagles team. But they're getting wins when they need them. They're finding ways to win in the tough in the trenches. They're finding ways to win in tough matchups. Kansas City, though, I mean, where's where to begin? Your second half is the absolute worst second half. Of every team, they have put up the least amount of points, 53 points in the second half of games all season. That is absolutely pitiful for a team that should be considered a contender. If they don't win it in the first half, 
they're not going to win the game at all. And that's how this Kansas City Chiefs team is operating. It is flirting with disaster, and if they keep this up, they will be a first round. They will be a first round exit in the playoffs this year, no doubt in my mind. Well, that's about gonna do it for me today. If you guys did like, don't forget to smash like and subscribe. All that fun jazz will help me out a whole lot. It tells me that I'm making content that you guys enjoy and that you guys want to come back to watch. And I guess with that, if you haven't already. Check out a video that YouTube recommends for you right down here. It would, be, it would mean the world to me if you would do that. Just for, wherever it is, somewhere down in this general vicinity, you know, the drill. And I guess with that, I will see you guys later. Peace out and have a good one.